This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Undertaker and Austin are going to main event the second raw on the path to SummerSlam, and Austin gets the win by DQ when mankind interferes. This, of course, is all to build up that boiler room brawl. Uh, who do you think deserves the, uh, the credit for being the, the brains behind the brawl, if you will, to adding the, uh, the boiler room concept to the slate at SummerSlam? Well, I'm sure the taker and Mick Foley both had a lot to do with creating that match because they had, to, something had to be created in a, in that unique area that both talents would sign off on. So I would say without knowing explicitly who. Uh, I would think it'd probably be a combination of Mick and undertaker. And then some, you know, Vince takes a germ of an idea that talent seemed to like, and then he refines it, expands upon it. And, uh, I, I was very leery that that boiler room brawl was going to come off as good as it did because uh, of the environment, you know, you're surrounded by steel and concrete. You're, it's not a, you're not trained to, to be a wrestler in this environment, but those guys have been two great pros and liking to work with each other. Uh, I thought, uh, pull it off famously. Next up though, two guys who should be nervous. It's the boiler room match. We've talked about this a lot, uh, but mankind's going to beat the undertaker in 26 minutes and 20 seconds. You know, this, this was filmed ahead of time and, and then they're going to play it on a screen on a series of televisions that they push out at ringside. And I'm sure on the big screen itself, but then they bring the action back into the arena. Right. Much like they did for WrestleMania 12 with Piper and gold dust. And that's where we see the big moment, the big turn, the thing that people thought would never happen where Paul bear would turn his back on the undertaker and, and smash him with the urn. It's an interesting concept of a match. And still to this day, one of the more memorable matches in wrestling history, maybe not just because of the violence that happened backstage but specifically the Paul bear turn, this is gotta be something that makes you grin ear to ear, knowing that you're the guy who pushed for Foley. And now not only is he working with the undertaker on pay-per-view, but as a result of Foley being involved here and the success of the mankind character, the whole Paul bear turn that forever changed, you know, wrestling. I mean, this shaped a lot of. A lot of little kids in the crowd had only grown up with the undertaker and Paul bear and to separate them was a major, major deal. Yeah, it was a major deal. And that was the focus of the old match was just how do we embellish the turn? Yes. And, uh, we, I thought we did a nice job with that, uh, cause it was incredible. We were, we needed to come off as incredulous. I can't believe we're, what we're seeing type thing. Pull an old line from Jack Buck. I can't believe what I've just seen. That was kind of the feeling you want to generate in your own verbal, verbal way. Uh, so I, I thought that was a, I don't know what ratings that Meltzer gave it. I haven't, I didn't, I didn't. He didn't. And because it was taped, he doesn't give taped uh, matches a rating, but okay. still he says no rating because much of it was taped, but bear was uh, great doing the turn and both worked very hard. The only negative was that the boiler room stuff lasted too long and needed commentary and crowd noise. The announcers did a great job with the turn. So uh, do you remember in hindsight who made the call for there not to be commentary on the back? Vince, yeah. Vince, okay. yeah. Let it ambient, uh, let it grow. Let it, let it be natural. I thought that was a mistake. Yeah. Uh, if, if nothing else, we could just add a little narrative here, there, and yon some reacts. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, that was just me. You know, it's not trying to get more airtime. I didn't get paid by the word. Uh, and nobody did out there, but that's what Vince wanted. He thought it would be a different touch because it's such a unique environment. The match was so unique. As I said, you know, wrestlers are not taught to learn how to, uh, uh simulate a match when you're fall, you're taking bumps on the concrete floor or you're in that boiler room like environment, what you perceive a boiler room to look like. So it was, uh, it was just, a it needed a little bit of help in that respect, but I will agree with this with Meltzer that I thought it might've been a little too long. Yeah. Just a little too long and maybe adding the three voices of, of, uh, Hennig and McMahon and myself might've helped that a little bit as far as the TV presentation was concerned, but that's not what the boss wanted. So 
we, we gave them exactly what he booked. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.